shadow of a doubt. Finally bringing back my Alfred Hitchcock director project, which I have not done. When I last saw on Letterboxd, the last time I reviewed a Hitchcock movie was eight months ago. Uh, because I think that was when I had decided to go back to school, move to Tennessee. And I think at the time I had like three director projects. I decided to tackle them one by one because I knew I was not going to have that much time to cover multiple director projects at once. So I finished Kubrick and I finished, just finished Peter Bogdanovich. And so now I'm back to finish the director project of the master of suspense himself. And I'm excited to finish this director project. Uh, Shadow of a Doubt is an exciting one to talk about. This film was released in 1943. Uh, this film uh, was actually a really big hit when it came out. And this film is very fondly remembered on the fact that of all the movies that Alfred Hitchcock made, this is the one that Hitchcock believed to be the best film that he ever made as a director, which is a huge compliment right there. Uh, this is the second time I have seen Shadow of a Doubt. Uh, is this one of Hitchcock's best movies, or is it his best movie? Well, let me read the synopsis. A bored teen living in Santa Rosa, California, Charlie Newton is frustrated because nothing seems to be happening in her life and that of her family. Then she receives wonderful news. Her uncle, for whom she was named Charlie Oakley, is arriving for a visit, but Uncle Charlie may not be the man he seems to be. Before I dive into my thoughts on Shadow of a Doubt, this is actually a collab video. Um, bring uh, When I decided to bring the Alfred Hitchcock project back to where I left off with Shadow of a Doubt, I had to bring a special guest on this one, and I had to bring somebody who I know was a big Alfred Hitchcock fan and still is. I know on his channel he do, he has occasionally reviewed episodes of the Alfred Hitchcock TV show, Alfred Hitchcock Presents, over on his channel. And it's cool to have him on the Alfred Hitchcock Director Project talking about Shadow of a Doubt. So I have invited G.R. Garrett from his channel Cinematic Tendency back on my channel and this collaborative review of Shadow of a Doubt. I have not heard his portion of the video. I'll be reacting to it on this live stream uh, as he shares his thoughts on Shadow of a Doubt. So, GR, what are your thoughts on this Alfred Hitchcock film? Hey guys, uh, it's good to be back with you again uh, as uh, Jacob and I are going to be talking a little bit about uh, this movie by Alfred uh, Hitchcock, Shadow of a Doubt, a movie from 1943, a movie that I heard about but I have not seen until last night. Right out of the gate, I am going to tell you if you haven't seen uh, this movie, Shadow of a Doubt, then you gotta check it out, man. This movie is currently uh, for rent, okay? I, don't, I, I couldn't find it anywhere on any of those uh, streaming services. So yeah, you're gonna be able to find it, but you're gonna have to pay uh, $3.99 in order to rent it for a few days. So I was gonna do that, however, I decided, you know what, should I pay $3.99 or should I just should I just buy it? And let me tell you, I usually never buy my movies without seeing them first. That's what I usually do. However, for this movie I decided to buy it instead of paying $3.99 just to have it for a few days. I got me uh, this copy and uh, I am happy to say that I am glad that I like the movie because I don't know if I can get my money back, you know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I like the movie, so um, I'm happy to say that. And uh, if, you, uh, if you're thinking about buying it, let me just show you, this is, this is the one I, I got. And uh, maybe, maybe you're a fan of physical media, 
uh, and I have no idea how many versions uh, of physical media uh, this movie is available but uh, the one I got it has some uh, good uh, bonus uh, features I was just checking those out so you're gonna get on the bonus features you're gonna get the making of Hitchcock's favorite film you're gonna get also the uh, the drawings of the production uh, uh, art and you're gonna get uh, to see some uh, production uh, photographs and uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna get to see the trailer and a few other things so this movie Shadow of a Doubt is known to be Alfred uh, Hitchcock's uh, favorite film and actually uh, it tells you uh, right here too right here where my finger is all right and um, and according to uh, Pat uh, Hitchcock that's uh, Hitchcock's uh, daughter according to her uh, this movie was um, her father's favorite film because Alfred Hitchcock he, he, he liked the idea of bringing uh, evil to a small little town all of us know that Alfred Hitchcock is known as the master of suspense so yeah the movie it has a lot of suspense all right it's, uh, it has a lot of mystery and as we know Hitchcock he was not only a very good uh, storyteller but one of the characteristics about him is like he uh, show uh, a lot of his story without saying much so we're gonna see a lot of shots that obviously uh, is just visuals that tell a story uh, visuals that complement the, the the whole uh, or the entire uh, storytelling some scenes you're gonna see uh, a lot of like shadows that are happening as as the story uh, is, is told and practically those were done on purpose because like I said uh, uh, those are done in, on very specific moments in the movie so uh, knowing uh, uh, Hitchcock knowing his style having read about him I'm pretty sure all of that was done on purpose the movie has a uh, very good performances it has uh, uh, Teresa Wright and John uh, Cotton and also there is a uh, a couple of a couple of uh, kids, a uh, boy and a girl, and they were not uh, actors uh, prior to this movie. Okay, so this was their their debut uh, being uh, being actors, and the little girl that you're gonna see in the movie, she was uh, coached by um, Alfred uh, Hitchcock's uh, daughter. Uh, you know, like like how to act and how to perform. And I gotta say, uh, I really like uh, the performance of both uh, of the of the children, uh, especially the little girl. She was a little funny, and uh, she was pretty pretty brainy. Like her character is what it, it was one of those uh, really smart uh, little girls. There's a lot of suspense. There's a lot of mystery, and uh, I really like how the mystery is kept for the most part of, of the movie. Uh, you're gonna see that uh, we know that the uncle. Uh, did uh, did something but we don't know what he did so that's kept it's not very obvious what he did uh, until later on in the movie that's when we start to realize what really happened so I like that and so so yeah so if you haven't seen this movie I, I'm not gonna give you any any spoilers even though this movie has been out since 1943 <laughs> so <laughs> it's a long time ago but still I'm not gonna give any 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 plot uh, twist or any any spoilers at all so it's about pretty much uh, Charlie Charlie uh, is played by uh, Teresa uh, Wright and so she lives in a small town with with her family and one day uh, her uncle Charlie uh, they, yeah they both uh, share uh, the same name and I think there is something there's a reason why uh, they share the same name. Uh, it's not it's not told in the story, but I believe it is. You know, I think it's one of those things that are like, 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 like behind the story. Like, like once you watch the movie more than once, or, or once you think about it a lot, you start to 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 see some correlations. And I think there's a reason why they share the same name. But I'm not gonna get into that. 
because uh, I want to watch the movie more than I, I seen it only one time last night so I want to watch it more time so this is one of those stories that uh, that the more you watch it I'm pretty sure you're gonna get more things out of it and so that's what I am anticipating I'm anticipating I'm gonna understand more about it once I watch it again and again so yeah so so Charlie uh, the niece uh, she's very happy to have uh, her uncle Charlie back home but then she discovers that there is something going on with with her uncle something something dark also uh, according to uh, some of the production uh, notes that I read uh, on, on the special features uh, Alfred Hitchcock he, he liked this movie because he, he said that uh, uh, to boil down uh, this movie is about that not, not all the villains are black and not all the heroes are white, uh, end of quote. So, so yeah, that's what Hitchcock said. And uh, and talking about that rela a relationship in the movie, I don't know if it's just me, uh, it could be just me, but that relationship with with both, uh, both uh, Charlie's uh, uncle and niece, at times, I'm not saying like the whole time, but uh, at some moments, I get, again, it might be just me, I get some like some weird vibes, like incest. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm right, but I wouldn't be surprised if Hitchcock did it on purpose. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, if you haven't seen the movie, uh, let us know down in the comments below. Once you watch the movie, let us know if you get those same vibes that I get sometimes. And if you have seen the movie more than once, also let us know down in the comments below. Because uh, I want to know if it's just me. Because it, yeah, it feels a little weird. It's like it's like uh, the movie uh, uh, Leon, right? Uh, the professional, that the, the, the movie. Uh, which is it's a classic action movie, right? Um, I remember watching it back in the day. But about uh, two years ago, about two years ago, I rewatched that movie, uh, Leon the Professional. And I got this, I was watching and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. The, I got a heavy vibes of pedophilia in that movie. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Like I said, I remember watching that movie back in the 90s when I was a kid, when that movie came out around that time, and I was cool. And now, uh, when I rewatch it now as a grown-up, I, I get some weird vibe with that. And I read something about the, the director, I forgot his name, uh, he's a French director. At the time that he, was ma that he made that movie, uh, Leon, The Professional, he was dating a very, very young woman, way younger than him. I don't remember her age. But anyway, that, that's just something that I wanted to say because uh, I, I kind of get the same vibes here, but not a lot, but sometimes at some moments. But I'm not talking about pure feeling, I'm talking about incest in this case. But uh, anyway, uh, I just wanted to I just wanted to put it out there because last night, it was, it was a little late and as I'm watching it, I'm like, oh, I was like, that relationship with uncle and, and, and niece is, is very unusual. Uh, I mean, it's not implied that there's something going on. I, I don't think it is, but a few moments it comes across a little, a little weird, a little strange. But again, uh, it, it could be just me. But uh, let me know your your take on that. At the end of the day, uh, I enjoyed the movie. Like I said, uh, I just watched it one time so far. I got me the physical media. This one that I got, that I was telling you. Uh, the the special features uh, there is a pretty good uh, video at the end about uh, the making of the movie uh, they interview uh, some of, some of the cast members I'm assuming uh, uh, only there's some some uh, some actors that are not in, in the interviews perhaps they're they are no longer with us uh, and then I, I was checking out at the end of the interview it was it was in 2000, so that's 23 years ago. Uh, Teresa Wright is in the in the interview, uh, so but I don't know if she's still around now in 2023. That's something that I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna look it up uh, later on today. I wanna know if she's still around or not. 
But, uh, so yeah, so I, I enjoyed the movie. Uh, I bought the movie and I plan to, to watch it again because uh, like I was telling you, this is one of those movies that uh, is, is, is kind of deep and it's like a, like, like a little bit like multi-layer. So yeah, definitely it's gonna be worth more than one uh, watching. But uh, yeah, guys, uh, it was good to it was good to see you guys. And Jacob, thank you for having me again. And uh, I look forward to uh, be back here uh, sometime very soon. Uh, Jacob, uh, again, thank you and thank you guys. And I am gonna see you very soon in another video. And until then, chop calamaro. All right, thank you. GR from Cinematic Tendency for being on my channel once again and sharing your thoughts on Shadow of a Doubt. I enjoyed your review of the film. I'm glad that you enjoyed the film and I'm glad that you enjoyed the movie that you ended up buying the DVD of it. I think that's pretty cool because physical media rocks. So I enjoyed your take on the film and those watching the stream or watching the replay or the standalone video, if you haven't subscribed, to his channel already, Cinematic Tendency. I'll leave a link in the description below. <laughs> Excuse me. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can check out GR's YouTube channel, Cinematic Tendency. He does movie reviews, out of the theater reactions, unboxings, uh, so many cool stuff on his channel. Definitely give him a like and subscribe and tell him that I sent you. And without further ado, my thoughts on Shadow of a Doubt. So, I've actually seen this film before. This is the second time I have seen Shadow of a Doubt. Uh, I first watched the film when I was a teenager, when I was first getting into Alfred Hitchcock. I was especially intrigued to check this movie out after hearing that it was Alfred Hitchcock's favorite film. When I watched it then, I loved it. Uh, one of my favorite Alfred Hitchcock films. And on this rewatch, I can say it is still one of Alfred Hitchcock's best films. It's not my very favorite Alfred Hitchcock film, but I think as of now, I can safely say Shadow of a Doubt is in my top five. Uh, this movie has such a crazy good premise where you have the Uncle Charlie who visits extended family, and he has a niece in this family that's named after him, also named Charlie, and they have a close bond. And... Uncle Charlie seems like an awesome guy, uh, charming personality, uh, cares a lot for his family, helps liven the family up because Charlie thinks the family's boring. Yeah, it seems awesome, right? There's some weird stuff in this character, though. Uh, you have his demeanor will change whenever bad news happens. He will rant about certain things which come off as very weird. And then, as GR pointed out, uh, whenever you see the uncle and niece together, there is some weird vibes. Uh, very creeper vibes. Uh, I don't know if I'd go... I don't know if I'd go as far as to say if it was incest or not, but it is, it is some weird vibes. Like, clearly he is weirdly obsessed with her, and she is weirdly obsessed with him. It is really, really weird. I will have to give you that, but I don't know if it, Hitchcock was going for incest, but Hitchcock was known for trying to sneak in some dark subject matter that was uh, beyond what the Hays Code was at the time. So I wouldn't be surprised if he got around that by implying that that was happening. But... Yeah, that's really that's it's really interesting to think about. But uh, what I like about this movie is that I, I love that the movie has a dark sense of humor, which is what Alfred Hitchcock was great at, uh, especially with the, uh, the family in general. Uh, that's like the I love how quirky the family is. Uh, there's this uh, younger girl in the film, a little girl who. Which I find funny that uh, the dad is reading like uh, comic books and other stuff like that, and the stuff that like, the girl would read, you know, she's not interested. She wants to be the brainy bookworm. She's reading all these like adult novels, 
all the dads off reading comic books. I thought that was a uh, kind of a funny little bit in the movie. And then there's a part where, like, the dad, every time he talks with his best friend, which I think, you know, works at the same job as him, I'd like to say, uh, they always love making hypothetical talks about what would they do if they killed one another. It is such an odd conversation, but every time they talk about this, they're trying to think, what would I do if I did this? What if I, what would what would I do if I poison your drink? Or what would I do if I, like, slit your throat and other things? I'm like... This is a weird conversation. Like these guys are nuts, but uh, it just I, I, it adds to the quirkiness of their characters, and it is a memorable moment of the movie. And what's even crazier is the dad in this family is played by Henry Travers, who is best known for playing Clarence the Guardian Angel in It's a Wonderful Life. So, uh, talk about an actor with versatility. He's in an Alfred Hitchcock movie and in a Frank Capra movie with two different character traits. Uh, pretty good character actor there. Also, the uh, uh, besides the dark sense of humor, you have this very unsettling story. Uh, you have the mystery surrounding Uncle Charlie. Uh, you know something is off about this guy, but you don't know what it is. And so... Young Charlie, Teresa Wright, uh, the more she starts seeing red flags, has to investigate what's going on. And so we're pretty much intrigued, much like her character, and then horrified by the results of what this guy's actually doing. And there's like layers upon layers to the story that is actually very fascinating. Like I am very shocked that Hitchcock got away with a movie like this in 1943. But I'm still glad that he made the film because the film is such a suspenseful little film with some good twists and turns surrounding it. And the performances in this movie are absolutely incredible. Like Joseph Cotton, who was primarily known for working with Orson Welles. He was in films like Citizen Kane, The Magnificent Ambersons, among others, uh, plays Uncle Charlie in this film. And... It's a challenging role to play because you got to play a character that's very charming and suave, but also have this ickiness surrounding him because clearly this guy is there, there's creeper vibes surrounding this character and Joseph Cotton had to pull that off and he did pull that off very well. Like he had to do like two different personality types, this character and, he did a great job with both of them. And likewise, uh, the standout of this movie, I would say, is Teresa Wright, who has to give uh, this very powerful performance as somebody who, you know, loves and respects her uncle very dearly, thinks the world of him. But then the more uh, she hangs out with him, sees that there's more to her uncle than what meets the eye. And so she's pretty much the audience character, the rootable audience character, the where you, uh, she's just as shocked as the audience is, and she's in a more compromising spot the more she learns more about her uncle and uh, how much of a uh, how much of her being in danger, learning about these things actually are. Uh, and, and you get to the third act of this movie, and it gets pretty crazy in like the last like 30 minutes of this movie some of the stuff that goes down without diving into spoilers uh one thing i'm not a fan of in shadow of a doubt is there's this subplot in the film involving Teresa wright's character and a detective uh this detective is investigating what's going on and Teresa wright's charlie character talks to him and it gets to a point where they like the detective has a crush on her, but she doesn't really see that. And she wants to be just his friend. That subplot doesn't really do much. I feel like an attempt to do a romance comes off as forced and it doesn't really add anything to the overall plot of the film. I feel like if there's anything in the film that could have been cut, it's this minor subplot. But it's not done in a way to where it's distracting or it takes me out of the movie because this is a great film. I highly, 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 highly love this movie. It's a great Hitchcock film, one of his best films, but that aspect did not always land.
for me. But at the end of the day, Shadow of a Doubt is still a terrific Alfred Hitchcock movie. It's a good mix of dark humor with a very unsettling story. I love the performances, especially Teresa Wright and Joseph Cotton. I think the film has some great use of camera angles from Alfred Hitchcock, especially the more disorienting the film gets. The film has a really great score, and I love how it uh, implements uh, classical music, which ties into the Uncle Charlie character and his past, and the use of piano when characters are walking uh, adds this general uneasiness throughout the course of the film, and uh, I really appreciate the score in this movie very, very well. Uh, there's some good twists and turns. Uh, I think the story pays off very well. Uh, there's some moments that uh, definitely left me on the edge of my seat, both in my original viewing and then when I rewatched it again. And all around, this is a fantastic Hitchcock movie. I can see why Hitchcock believed this to be his best film because uh, just the premise in this film is absolutely brilliant uh, uh, with this kind of unsettling evil that kind of takes place in an unlikely place in a small town. And that leaves a pit in my stomach, honestly. And Hitchcock did a great job with that uh, and how it can happen even in an average family too. I think that's really intriguing. That's really good as well. I, I like that angle that Hitchcock went for. And it's a very intense film that's also very entertaining and also one of his very best films. So at the end of the day, I gave Shadow of a Doubt a 5 out of 5 on Letterboxd and a 92 out of 100 on my 100-point scale.